Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to take a look at finding, tuning, identifying, and then traveling on radials with VORs. Uh, we've done some work in the past with VORs before, but today I thought it'd be kind of a neat little start of a series where we're going to travel without that lovely magenta line of safety and instead concentrate all of our flying on using the good old-fashioned radio navigational methods. Let's get started. So uh, currently right now, we are somewhere in the, uh, I don't know, uh, the weather is not looking terribly good today. And of course, this is, you know, my uncle's plane. And as you can see, looking real quickly here, I have no GPS anywhere to be seen. I have no special nav map or anything like that. I seem to be in a bit, bit of world of hurt here because it's uh, not looking very good. I've got nothing reading. I've got a bunch of nav flags. Everything's looking pretty gross. Uh, so we're in a pretty bad world of hurt here. But the good news is it doesn't mean we're lost. It just means we're going to be using some alternate techniques. Weeks. So let's go ahead and take a look. I have a couple different tools that we're going to bust out today to sort of kind of get you familiar with the process. And then we're going to jump into the sim and actually try it out ourselves. So what I'll do is I'll actually go ahead and pause that real quickly here just for a moment. And then I'll go ahead and bring up this lovely website called Sky Vector. Uh, for those of you who do not know this, uh, getting used to Windows 11, by the way, um, it's a little different. Now, what this website will do for you, of course, is it will provide you with all sorts of useful navigational aids. Now for today, what we did is we actually took off from Block Island Airport, which is uh, this lovely airport right there. And um, we're gonna be looking for some sort of radio navigational aid that we could actually use for the purposes of trying to get around. Now there's a lot of different ways to find a VOR on your actual chart. Uh, the first method you can do is look for these giant compass roses. Uh, the second thing you can do, especially if you're in a sky vector here, is you can actually wander up to the top and press world low. And the great thing about this is it makes them very, very obvious. If you switch over to world high, it makes them even less obvious because a lot of these airways are are just a little too high. So like I said, VFR works pretty well for us. So one of the things you'll notice uh, when we do I go ahead and identify a VOR station is you're going to observe the fact that it's going to describe what that particular equipment is. It's going to give us a frequency, uh, which we can go ahead and use. It's also going to give us a channel. It's going to give us an identifier, which is going to be very, very important for us in a minute, because without that identifier, it's going to make our lives a little interesting, especially if you get the wrong frequency. Um, the other thing you're going to have, of course, is this lovely compass rose around it, which represents the different radials coming out of it. Now, I know your brain is sitting here going, okay, I know a little bit about this. You've talked about this before. I, I kind of get where you're going, but could you like break that radial thing down for me a little more? The answer is absolutely. I'll break that radial thing down a little bit more. So this is a great website. If you have not played with this one before, it is really, really cool. Lutz Monterio. If you just type in VOR simulator, you'll get it. So if you take a look at our previous example here, we can see a block island 117.8. So we have a channel, we have an identifier, all that other good stuff. And you notice it's not tilted straight up. That is because VOR stations, very high frequency omnidirectional range, only work on magnetic headings and it's actually more complicated than that it's magnetic at the time of the creation of the station so it's actually causing a little bit of issues but again things we'll deal with later on so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go ahead and grab this here and i'm gonna pretend we're our airplane so if you remember, we took off from Block Island, and currently we're flying somewhere away, probably roughly to the north. I had to make a little bit of a guesstimate here. And one of the things you'll notice here is that this tool here projects a bunch of different radials off of it. Those radials are simply electronic courses that our aircraft equipment can identify to tell us exactly how close we are to the center or not to the center of. And the other thing we have that's a huge benefit of especially ADF or NDB is the fact that we can use this as a way to go from a specific direction to or from a station. Now, one quick question you'll always get, of course, is radials always extend away from a station. So for example, if you look at this green line that my mouse is on right now, this radial is this 360 degree radial going away from this station. Now, what I want you to see now is I'm going to go ahead and grab my plane and I want you to take a look at this instrument right here. This instrument allows us to select, uh, this is our CDI, by the way, it allows us to select what radial we want to ride on to or from the station. Now, the select radial I've selected right now is the zero degree radial. And uh, what you'll observe here is if I grab my plane, if I were to take my plane and put it onto that radial, I'll go ahead and do that here, you can see very clearly that my CDI centers up quite nicely. The other thing you're going to observe is the fact that it's going to have this little flag that's going to flip to the word from. What that means is we're somewhere in this part of the radio. We're going away from the station. So again, if I'm over here, if I'm over here, if I'm over here, it doesn't matter. As long as I'm anywhere in this 180 degree arc away from the station centered at that particular radio I've selected, it will always say from. Now, the reason this causes a lot of consternation is let me go ahead and take my airplane and flip it upside down here. Let me flip it all the way around. Ha ha ha. And what you'll observe here is it still shows from. One of the things you have to remember about any VOR navigation, it doesn't matter if you're doing fancy instrument, anything, 
is you will always be relative to the station. So as you can see, even though my aircraft is pointing right at the station, I'm still coming from it. So one of the common problems people have when they're first learning this style of navigation without that magenta line to see where things are is they have to get a hang just mathematically in their brain what's going on. Now I notice here that my heading of my aircraft is basically south and I notice my selected VOR, my selected radial I should say, is heading north. Uh, those two pieces of information alone should tell you that something's probably wrong with our aircraft. So let me go ahead and flip us back around to the correct direction. Now watch what happens when I grab my airplane and I pull it onto this side. Notice as soon as we cross that magical 90 degrees off of either side, the 180 degree area, you will see that the flag flips to two. So it doesn't matter where I am down here, it's always going to say two, even if I have something really absurd like this going on. I'm still technically going to be pointing to two, even though I'm not approaching the station. That's one of the things that, like I said, people get confused of. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this and go chunk, and you'll notice when you cross this bar here, into the upper half, the upper quadrant or hemisphere, if you prefer, you'll notice it flips, even though it has nothing to do with the position of my aircraft. So why is this important? This is important because we're going to need to use this to be able to identify and be able to figure out where we are along this. And that's going to be kind of next week's, uh, next Wednesday's video, so to speak. So let's go ahead and break down our problem here. So we took off from Block Island. So I'm going to go ahead and add this as part of our plan. And our desire today is to go ahead and uh, fly. We're going to go up north today. Let's go up to, uh, let's see, Northampton. Um, <laughs> forget Northampton. I'm going up to Barnes, make a nice, uh, Westover, I should say. So this is the path we'd like to follow. Now, one of the things I notice is my little VOR station here, and we're going to do our identification in a minute, is crossing, let's see here, this is about 350, this is about 349 degree radial here, theoretically will get us up to that particular position. Now, the interesting thing you'll see here is, I'm sorry, 339, my bad, um, 339 degree radial here, because I can't count, you will observe the fact that it is the same as our magnetic heading, but it is not the same as our true heading. That actually is really, really handy for us because that tells us we're basically going to be heading in the correct direction. So now that we have that information in mind, we know if we can somehow follow this line from this station towards that station for about 75 miles, about 45 minutes, don't worry, we're a lot faster than that, and we know that we've identified it correctly, we're going to the right spot. So let's go ahead back over to Flight Sim real quickly here and see if we can translate some of this to the actual game. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and dial in the radial, or I should say the VOR that I'm interested in today. So I'm going to float down here, and this is my Navigation 1 radio, this is my Navigation 2 radio. If you're ever in doubt, just hold your mouse like this, and usually it tells you. So we're going to dial in 117.80. Now the way all these radios typically work is you have a standby frequency, and you have a use frequency. The standby frequency is the one that's ready to go, the use frequency is the one we're actually using very important that you identify the difference between those two. Otherwise, our confusion will set in very, very quickly. I'm just going to go ahead and reduce power a little bit here. We're going a little hard on these engines, so might as well. Also, my cylinders are getting a little on the warm side, so let me crack that just a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Open that up. Bring down my RPM a little bit. Get a my slightly more satisfied cruise here. Ah, this plane is so high performance. There we go. Looks good to me. So what I'm going to do is press the swap button. And what that's going to do is going to put 117.80 into my actual use frequency. Now, it can confuse things a lot more, and this is one of the things you have to be very careful of depending on what aircraft you're flying here. This frequency might not actually be the radio station that we're interested in. So one of the things we have to do is we have to find out if we got the right one. And the simplest way to do that, if you have GPS, of course, is it'll actually read the digits to you. But for us, we're going to come over to here where it says Nav 1 Receive. I'll turn my volume up so I can hear. And I'm going to turn that on. Now, depending on the system that you have and on what aircraft you're flying on, you will hear a series of dots and dashes. And now the one we would be looking for in this particular case would be three dots, one single dot, a dash, a dot, and two dashes to tell us that we are on the correct station. Now, for some reason uh, today, our particular navigation radio is not projecting the sound that we need to have. I could turn both of these on and uh, nothing, of course, would happen. I can hit all those on. It is not going to make any difference whatsoever because of the way that this aircraft's volume is set up. So one of the things we can do is we can come up with an alternate way to identify that we are indeed on the correct station. Again, if we were on the 172, you'd see that as well. One of the things we probably noticed is uh, when we were looking at our little diagram earlier here is you probably saw the fact that this is a VOR DME, which means it also is going to give us the distance away from this particular station. And the way we can use that is if we pop back over to the sim, we probably notice that we have our DME instrument over here, and this number is indeed getting bigger. So we can estimate that from this station, 
it is somewhere about 18 nautical miles away from us, which makes sense based on the situation that we're in. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come swing down here and we're going to dial in the radial that we want to follow. If you remember from our example earlier, we desire to fire the 339 radial. So let's go ahead and get that one all configured here. You know, let's tap the glass. I always find that kind of funny. So 340, 339. And the thing we can see here very, very clearly is where we want to be is to the left of our current position. So if we maintain our northerly course here, we're never going to get to this line. So what we need to do is execute a turn somewhere in here to get this line to recenter. Now, one of the things I love about HSIs as a tool is you can see very clearly where our plane is versus where we need to be. So theoretically, if I point the plane at 240 here, what's going to happen is it's going to be putting us right towards that particular course that we desire to follow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and execute a handy dandy little plane turn here. You can see everything's rotating. <laughs> and you can see our plane is now turning towards where our desired course is going to be. Uh, one thing I'm going to do just real quick is take a look at my cylinders while I'm goofing off here. Uh, that's plenty. Yeah, it's plenty. That's plenty. I just want to make sure we're not overheating or anything while I'm talking here. Looks pretty good. You can see the whole aircraft is turning very, very aggressively. Now, one of the great things about this particular tool when we're trying to line up with a radial for the purposes of doing our non-GPS navigation is we can actually tell how close we are to this line based on how many of these little dots of deflection we have. As you can see right now, this line has got two dots away from the center. Depending, of course, the type of uh, radio tool we're using here would have a big impact on just how far off we are. But the best way to think about this is this is two degrees off, this is four degrees off. So we know here that when we're within two degrees is when we cross this, when within four degrees we cross this. Now, for those of you who are big geometry or trigonometry fans, you can tell us the farther away we get from the source, the more likely this um, degree is going to be a wider distance. Now, we're about uh, 21 nautical miles away from the source right now. One of the things you'll notice very fascinating is this number is actually getting smaller, not bigger, even though we're exactly square to it right now. We're basically flying perpendicular. That's going to increase steadily, and then it's going to rapidly decrease on account of the fact that that works. Now, 3-3, three, three, uh, I can actually see, i got to move my head a little bit here. This is one of the challenges of a flight sim here is trying to get your courses as precise as you mathematically can. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to speed up time a little bit here, and I'm going to go ahead and intercept that course, or at least wait until the needle starts dancing. And there it goes. You can see very clearly that we're moving towards that course, just like we promised. So I'm going to go ahead and slow down my time acceleration here. Now, I am two degrees away. We're getting there too soon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my airplane to go ahead and pick a course between these two headings for the purposes of trying to catch this one. Uh, what we don't want to do is overshoot because uh, when we overshoot, you tend to kind of do uh, sort of this pattern, as you can see with my little mouse here. And we're going to be zigzagging all over it. So part of the trick of flying VORs is knowing when to turn and how hard you have to turn for the purposes of acquiring. Generally, if you're anywhere within a degree, anything less than 10 degrees is enough, depending on the wind for the day. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of keep gently bringing the airplane in. You can see we're now aligning ourselves quite neatly up with that course right there. Kind of bring us a little bit more to the right here, and that looks pretty good to me. And I'm just bringing a little bit more. Now I'm going to snap us basically right onto course here. Now, a lot of people say, can we use the navigation autopilot for the purposes of following these courses? The answer is yes. The downside with this strategy is because of the inaccuracy built into these particular tools, you will find it very, very, very challenging to accurately follow this course. And you can see we're perfectly aligned with that on that 339. Now, one of the things you probably remember is where are we going? Are we going away from Black Island or towards it? And this big arrow now tells us without a doubt, we are now going away from that station on our selected 339 course. And we can even go one step further if we wanted to do an idiot check. We can see here that the numbers are getting bigger, which means we are traveling away from that specific VOR. So as you can see, uh, identifying relatively straightforward, uh, tuning relatively straightforward, getting on the correct radial, that takes a little bit of experience, but you can kind of see how all those pieces come together. For the next video, what we're gonna do is take a look at how you can find fixes along a radial. Enjoy.